Hi, meine lieben, lieben, wir werden heute ein Spiel spielen und zwar machen wir heute weiter mit Killer Frequency. Ich bin so gespannt, was jetzt hier am Ende bei rauskommt. Ich hoffe hier auch, ich will mal sagen, wir quatschen das gar nicht lange und gehen rein. Let's Fets. Viel Spaß. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Ja. Ah, wo geht's denn jetzt hier weiter? This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. Oh, you're right. So, what's the plan now? Yo, uh, I don't know. We could try Sandra. What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll be careful. Hopefully she's yeah. at her jazz studio. Aha! Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra! It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> okay. Oh, I always thought folks okay, so called into sure. a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. By forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Uh, I'm doing. Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I could tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know oh. about the death of a boy <laughs> named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Ah. Uh, yeah, nicht zu hart. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. And even if I did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. Sandra, are you okay? It was years ago. We know, Sandra. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Of course. We understand. I mean, it's not like I killed him. Yeah, okay. What's well. the harm in saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river? Right? Right? I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great, Forrest. Okay. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But it's I so wonder pointy. if you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. Uh, yeah. No, I don't wanna. Oh, come on! It's his birthday. I won't have a chance to Nein. do it again until next year. Nine, she is well, Uh, fine. What's his name? Thank you, Forrest. He's my uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. 
Stop! Stop! I got you! You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! God damn it, Peggy! This is your fault! My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. <sighs> Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Just pick it up, okay? This is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. Find your luck, dear. I laughed nine. Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? Nine. Nine. <sighs> nine. I'm not. Forest? I hope. The whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That was... That was too much. Nine. That's it's three. okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's... All I'm gonna say about that. Mm, moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. Forrest, I'm calling because I need your help. Huh? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Right. Okay. Tell us everything. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? I'm a... And I started to feel like I was... He's a normal man I came back to my apartment building but this newfangled security system has me locked out. Mm -hmm. I need you to help me get inside. Uh, Can a fun. neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the... New Woodside apartment building. It's Woodside. I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. Shit. Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muzzle that thing and... Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any... The whistling man is coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. Yeah, but I need to help. I need the code for that security system or I'm going to die. Uh... What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad... And it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. Starling. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. Das ist das erste Mal, dass ich den Pfeifer nicht all right, pfeifen folks. höre. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. While I try to break Dawn into her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was 
weird yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. Hey. Okay. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers okay. for the Starling 4000. Good. Okay, das ist uh, nicht so schwierig, das schaffen wir. Uh, es ist ja wahrscheinlich irgendwo unten, wird es dann ein Manual geben, denke ich mal. Oh, ist das gruselig, ey. So, schauen wir mal. Ähm. Wo. Nee, da, wo er das haben könnte. Sein, ey. Oh! Starling 4000. Das sieht gut aus. User Manual. Wow. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Schauen wir uns gleich mal an. Sagt, mir fällt, wie sie auch sagt, irgendwas war komisch, aber mir fiel jetzt auf, dass es das erste Mal nicht gepfiffen hat. Wie sonst immer. Schauen wir mal. Du hast kurz Wartungsanforderung. Alarmtest, Achtung, sämtliche Sicherheitsfunktionen werden ausgelöst. Vielleicht sollten wir sie nicht reinlassen. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 Security Manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. 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 I'm so The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Oh. 
Okay, Gallows okay. Creek. Okay. Here's some music while we process what just happened. So, the whistling man is a woman? I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Got him. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Yeah, Why do you think cool she much. requested that song? Hmm. Yeah, to get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Yeah. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in mm -hmm. before she attacks you. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. The killer was calling themselves Dawn. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. You folks have my new number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help I shed some light on our killer. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. So, what's This is Forrest Nash, and you're <clears throat> listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help okay. me. Uh. Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? We'd been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling. All of a sudden, he just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no, Forrest. Then what happened? He went up the road and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. Okay. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Casey, was his attacker the whistling man? Yeah, That's okay. all I know. Please, we need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. Ja, gut, dass sie nicht jetzt unseren Code hat, weil wir haben das gleiche Sicherheitssystem, ne? Wait. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, it's not so funny now, is it? Before they left, but please, he needs to get to the hospital. I can't drive, so we need an ambulance. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Okay. Uh. Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's. Okay, okay, What's your okay. friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Okay. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know... I know, mm -hmm. but please, we need something. I mean, ein, ein Auto? Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. 
We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. Mm. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, I'm sure we can handle it. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's yeah. stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, <clears throat> you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. The blunt I'm glad so far, because there's more to go. Uh... I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply a cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Okay. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really it's sorry. So blunt. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. <sighs> find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Okay. Casey's still on line one. Hello? Hello? Forrest, are you there? Yeah. Hi, Casey. I'm here. How are you doing? I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. Yeah, say good. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No, 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 no. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get <laughs> Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Y yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Uh, okay. Fast as my hand can. All right. I, I think we need to leave that knife alone. All right. I'll just keep putting pressure on his stomach for now. Forrest, can I have a word? Uh, okay. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything, and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. Er spricht, Mann. Oh, sorry. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly <clears throat> what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I never mind. Hold on, so, noch weiter aus. How does KFAM's first aid course help? Hold us? Noch weiter aus. Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah. Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. Hold noch weiter aus. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And uh, since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. 
I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. Eh? I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. Ja, Vian, mach schneller. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something oh. in his office will give it away. Okay. Right. There is something Bist else. Noch langsamer. I'm not gonna like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. You put behindert. them in a computer and you do something. Peggy, I know what ja, a floppy disk is. Sagen. Anyway, Reggie Mine. decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll okay. just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. <sighs> okay. I'll just have to look around. This is Reggie's office. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Okay. Okay. Uh, was ist denn Reggie's Office? Reggie, wer ist denn Reggie? Äh, nee, ach du, oder doch, könnte natürlich hier, ist hier ein weiterer... Wer ist denn Reggie? Ich, ich weiß nicht, wer Reggie ist. Also gut, es muss eine Tür sein, die wir noch nicht... Äh, ah, halt! <lacht> noch nicht geöffnet haben. I'm not getting in there tonight. Uh, nein. Wo soll denn Reggie's Office sein? Vielleicht noch ein Staff? Äh. Da. Ist das unser Chef? Ja. Okay. Okay. Äh, was suchen wir? Looks like I need a four digit code. Very important date. Nope, that's not working. Must okay, be something else. Okay, 1009. 1009. Nope, that's not working. Must be something else. Um, uh, okay. Also, das ist es nicht. Um, Uh, what's that? Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my book. Uh, ask Jeannie. Uh, okay. Uh, floppy disk. What's that? Ah, no. Uh, a floppy. Ah! Äh, ja. Äh. Could this be it? F07. Nice! Äh. Uh. 
Oh, auch nicht. Äh. Tschüss. Karen, die war auch nicht mit da. Äh, okay, es kommen also nur die und... Der in Frage, ne? Ja. Achso, muss ich einlegen, ne? Okay, schon ab. Okay. Okay. Ja, das ist er. John Hedges. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I... Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to give him a rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Yeah, I wish. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay, okay? Okay. But please, I, I can't give him what he needs. Please send help. I can't lose him. All right, Forrest, we need to hurry. Jason doesn't sound like he's doing too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? Uh. Uh. Jetzt heißt das bei dem ganzen Gesabbel. Ja, toll. Super. Ähm. We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably okay, the nice. most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic. Was fragst du denn yeah, jetzt? Mach's doch einfach. John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's help me pick. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or... Never mind. He's lost a lot of blood, and he's passed out. We need you to help him. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is gonna die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I... I haven't been called on 
gone for over 10 years. Smash Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach, and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies, and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak, and then just started thrashing. What about now? Is he still thrashing? Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're gonna be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. This is John Hester. I'm here about Casey. Okay, that's a guy's name. With that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes to Jason. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Yeah. Thank you. So... Okay. Was he close up? It's getting pretty late. This might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. Yeah? Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through, too. Time to turn the music off. Okay, let's pass it. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man, thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, yeah, let's never. calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Okay. Oh, what's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallows High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Okay. Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky. Were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? What you see? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. I, okay. I didn't really know her before or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were... just having a good time, and then... the next thing I knew... everyone was running for their life. I looked up... and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. 
Okay. And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't okay. know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And uh, Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. It took a long time to learn, but... Yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank mm -hmm. you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, ma'am. Yeah, okay, well, anyway, thank you. Well, good. I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Ah! Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. <coughs> if anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late 30s now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in. But hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it! Alright folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Ah, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one! Hello? I'm glad I got back oh. to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sara and I are both happy to be headed back home. Okay. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sara? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. Okay. Uh. It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. It turns okay. out somebody had cut the phone lines. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he, how she, how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Okay. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot. But here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking okay. to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Okay. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. Uh -huh. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. Uh... Best we don't waste any time, then. Let's get back on air. You got it. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Bringing you back live, now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say, 
Things are looking up. It's almost over. But for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. Okay. We're preparing Another. to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much! If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Jason, we meet at last. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but... John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. Yeah. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. I'm yep. As far as we know, anyway. I was worried you'd say that. God damn it. Actually, I'm glad you called. I wanted to talk to you about what happened earlier. Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but... This call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. <coughs> hell. And then the town just moved on, like it never existed. Was war, is, is dieses dieses klein Krämer Geheimnistuerei, ey? What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank. That's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash. Uh, it was stupid. I don't want to we each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man tended to get stabbed in front of everyone and started an almighty panic. Those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't... Uh... Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Okay. Broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the top so we can end this nightmare? Fair point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. 
you might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh, see you when you're back. Oh, is that? Unten in der Besenkammer. Das ist richtig verstanden. Far back ah. corner. Why is this station so big? Ein großer roter Knopf. Ah. That must be it. Boom! We've got power. Okay. The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Uh. <laughs> Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Es ist eine Frau. Die wirst du ja wohl überwältigen können, meine Fresse. Nein. Oh no. Peggy, where did you go? No. This can't be happening. Uh, yes? A, a call. Ah. Did Dawn press the Peggy button? Did, did she want me to hit it on my end? Ach, da. What do you want? Good to talk to you again, Forrest. You know, I've really enjoyed our chats tonight. I guess we've had some moments. My favorite was when Ricky ran you out of the rink. Ha! Huh. You sure did get me then, Forrest. Where's Peggy? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show, but it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. I'd rather not if that's okay. <laughs> oh, Forrest. Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, well, let me take that. Out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Teddy? Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world... Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy, and if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. But I can see you. You're standing right in front of me. Oh, I get it. You're wondering who's there at the station with you. Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek. 
to my boy, Henry Barrow. Was? Your son? Das ist aber sehr, ähm... You mean you... Wait, that, that he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. Hang on. Did you say... Barrow? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. <sighs> Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. <sighs> There we go. Okay. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Where are you going with all of this? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I won't do it, Marie. I won't be part of this. You sure that's what you want to do, Forrest? Last chance. I won't do it, Marie. Have it your way. Henry, honey? He's all yours. Last nine! Hey, wait a minute. Back off! Don't come any closer! Don't worry. I'll let Peggy know you asked about her. Before I send her your way. Nein, 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 nein. Oh. Nein! Ey, der kam durch die Böhr. Was bist du denn für ein Weichei? Dass du dich nicht wehren kannst. Wirklich. Jetzt mal im Ernst. Okay, dann müssen wir da wohl noch mal reingehen und ähm, das ein bisschen anders klären, oder? So, mein Lieben, wir werden das Ganze jetzt noch mal probieren. Ohne zu, äh, ohne zu sterben, ja? Ist ein anderer Tag. Ja, wir sind vorhin leider in den Regen gekommen. Da sehen wir etwas fauscht aus, wir beide. Ähm... So. Teddy, be honest with me, or we're both ich würde going ungern to die. sterben. Honest? Forrest? I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> What the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just the night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling <laughs> Point. Uh... God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Um, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart 
one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, <laughs> I helped him keep himself together. You... You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man, everyone ran, screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... God damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Mm. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream, and he starts laughing telling me it's, it's just a joke. I could stall for time here. Darum sagte er, es ist nicht mehr so lustig. Okay. Tell me, what happened next? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Chuck Brody was the whistling man. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just Teddy. George fell off Whistling Point. Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, God damn it! I just chased him up there, and... He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. <laughs> you bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Even if you didn't push him, you still chased him to his death. I can't be blamed for someone not getting a joke. Ugh! I think Marie would disagree. But, if you really felt that way, why the cover-up? My future 
was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, Forrest. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? Whoa, 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 whoa. His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she... Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp Creek. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes, okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. I am. The mm -hmm. false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too, isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report, said George was drinking, that he just got himself into trouble, and... Fake report? Uh, I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. If Dr. Sullivan had survived, then maybe... There's no excuse for what she did, Forrest. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That coward killed the story. But Maurice Russell is dead now. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. It never should have started. He shouldn't have pushed my George off a cliff. He should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met, before he joined the football team, it was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. You're at the football field. Jesus Christ! Forrest, you idiot! We're in the gym at Gallows Creek High! I told you not to do that. Wait! <laughs> He's... dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So... Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy! Peggy. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I worry you wouldn't have come. Cool and here Und ich. I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Will someone please explain to me what's happening? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That... My sister is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... 
I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. It's disappeared. weird. I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie... I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're yeah. gone, yeah. well, I'll have to settle for the next best thing. I. Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze, uh, Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night too. But they got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left... Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I could prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Ich hab mich das rettet. Henry, you don't have to do this. There's still time to make the right decision. Henderson police! Freeze! No! Henry! Get out of there! Henderson police! Freeze! Forrest. Leslie? How's Peggy? She... Oh my god. Peggy, where's Marie? Gone. Bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. 
Kann ich das Ende auch noch spielen, ohne Peggy zu töten? Das wäre jetzt natürlich noch eine Möglichkeit. Das werde ich jetzt heute nicht mehr tun. Wir beenden damit erstmal diese Runde Killer für Quincy. Und ich werde mir überlegen, ob wir noch aber eine Runde spielen, indem wir versuchen, nochmal ein wirkliches Ende zu erspielen, indem vielleicht auch wirklich die Liebe Peggy überlebt. An dieser Stelle bedanke ich mich erstmal bei euch fürs äh, dabei sein. Ich war ein super Game. Ich hoffe, es hat es auch gefallen. Und wir sehen uns nächsten Tag zu einem neuen Let's Play. Macht's gut. Bis dann.